Welcome back to Play Excite Studios, everyone. Ryan here, and on this edition of Explained, I'm discussing different audio connection standards and cables that no doubt power your musical world, at least if you're in the electric side of things like I am. And this is a topic that I think unfairly gets brushed under the rug a lot of the times because, you know, on a basic level, it does seem so obvious. We take our guitar, we plug in a cable on one end, we take that cable, put it to our effects unit or amplifier, ta-da, we're done. But the reality is that as simple as a, as a thing that may seem, um, there are so many different standards out there. There are so many different applications that picking the right cable is important. And if you do it the wrong way, it could actually potentially damage a piece of gear. So it's important to know what you're using, why you're using it, and some of the very subtle differences between some of the things that uh, we'll be looking at today. On a high level, the role of an audio cable is rather straightforward. In essence, this is simply a way to interface one electric circuit with another. That's pretty much it. Think about a tube amplifier. You know, there's all kinds of resistors and capacitors, potentiometers, the tubes, perhaps transistors. Um, there's the power amp components like the transformers, the chokes, and all these things are permanently or semi permanently hardwired together. It is a an interface that you know you can't just go poking around in there and plug in new components. Think about if every time you wanted to plug in your guitar to a new effect unit, you had to hardwire it in. You know, no one would want to break out a soldering iron every time just to change out amps or especially a single overdrive pedal. And that is the beauty of this often unsung hero is that we can just quickly you know unplug things, and when we do plug it in we've got a continuous circuit because essentially this is a glorified piece of copper wire. Now, we can't just run a single piece of copper wire from a guitar to an amplifier and expect to get good results. And a lot of these cable standards try to solve that very problem in terms of audio quality, uh, noise, and especially safety. While I dive through these audio connection standards, keep in mind that the type of connector used on a cable or a piece of I.O. in the, whatever gear we're looking at doesn't make it a good indicator of what it's actually doing. And I would turn to consumer electronics for a, a good example of this with USB drives. We're all really familiar with that. Um, you know, on, on the mail side of things, you've got a standard flash drive, you've got one end of a charging cable, and then those would interface with like a charger that would be plugged up to a standard wall socket. You can plug it into your computer or laptop. But we all know that you know, you can plug in a USB drive into a charger, but you're not going to be able to extract data on it. It's just going directly to the grid, right? Um, but on the other hand, you can actually take that cable and almost always interface it with our computers, and that will charge it, and we can actually transfer data, you know, um, pull pictures off her phone or, or, you know, put new ones on, change music around or whatever. And that's kind of the same thing you run into with these cables. And, you know, it can get really advanced with stuff like USB 3, 3.1, uh, where you can run like video and power and all this crazy stuff at the same time. And you'll notice a similar thing in the world of music gear, where it can use the same kind of connection standard, or especially one that sort of looks like this, and do things that are completely different. Not to mention that the cables themselves can be different while using the same connection standard. I guess we gotta start this with the granddaddy of them all with the TS cable, standing for tip sleeve. And on any unbalanced cable like this, you can expect the signal to be coming out of the tip and your grounding to be happening on the sleeve portion and separated by a little black piece of insulation there. And this is a standard that actually comes out of the telecom industry, just like a lot of things that have to do with audio, uh, dating as far back as like the mid to late 19th century when you know, we're still using stuff like telegraphs and the early telephone system. So you see, you know, switchboards and uh, all that old B-roll footage of like World War II operators, like, you know, pulling all the other jacks out and, you know, putting it into different slots. They're probably using a TS cable, which of course was adapted for so many different things for audio. Now, this is where that caveat I mentioned earlier starts to come into play because in one hand, I hold a TS cable and in the other hand, I hold a TS cable. <laughs> Same connectors, but very different roles. And you can't really tell what they are by just looking at it unless you read the cables themselves. 
and you know there's a couple telltale signs that might be able to uh, you know give you a guess as to what each is. But if there's no information on it, there's only really one surefire way of knowing that is to disassemble them slightly. And so in this hand, I actually hold a very bog standard instrument cable. You know, this is what you plug your guitar into, go into an amp or an effects pedal or your sound card, while this is a speaker cable that would go from the output of an amplifier to a speaker cabinet. And they both fit. You know, I could plug this cable from my guitar to an amp and this one from an amp to a speaker cabinet, but you might have some bad times. Um, this is meant to be a high impedance, low level kind of signal. This is basically the complete opposite a high level, high current, and low resistance, low impedance kind of signal. And you can actually tell by the wire that's used, you know, this is a single, very, you know, relatively small kind of copper core grounded on one end, while this actually has two separate thicker wires. This is shielded, this is not. And so what you can run into is if you use a speaker cable as your instrument cable, because it's unshielded and you have a, you know, kind of a small signal to work with to begin with, all the background, you know, AC hum, all this noise that normally this would block, this can actually kind of act like a, an antenna of sorts. So you can run into some noise problems there. And on low levels, you'll probably get by with an instrument cable uh, going from your amp to a speaker cab, but as you turn it up, you're gonna run into some distortion and possibly if it's enough wattage, you can melt this cable and completely break your setup. So don't do that. Be 100% sure that you're using the right cable for the job. Again, it's not just about the connector. We're using the exact same connection standard, but it's a different role entirely. Uh, fortunately, some stuff has gone to speak on, which is good, but not everything. So there's absolutely still room for error in the world of guitars. For a mono sound source like your electric guitar, a standard TS cable is more than fine. But what about those that require a stereo signal path, or maybe even beyond that. Well, enter the TRS cable with a ring between that aforementioned tip and sleeve that provides another path for another signal. Um, in this instance, this is driving a pair of stereo headphones, so you've got like left-right ground. And this actually comes with another cable. Instead of being the quarter-inch format, it is three and a half millimeters, so be more compatible with mobile devices if they don't stop making them altogether. Um, and this is tip ring ring sleeve. So one of those rings is actually a microphone. Um, so you'll see that on like lavaliers or uh, especially switching kind of interfaces, you know, whether it be an expression pedal or uh, switching jacks on an amplifier or multi effects unit. It often uses that kind of stuff just to have more relays and uh, more channels to play with. So just because you see this kind of format doesn't necessarily mean it's only a mono cable or you know, it doesn't guarantee much of anything really, you kind of have to look. In addition to that though, the TRS connection introduces the concept of balanced versus unbalanced signals. And when we talk about a regular instrument cable like this, these are almost always unbalanced. You've got one signal wire, a ground, and, and that's it. But when we think about TRS connections or something like the classic XLR, we're talking about balanced signals where we have not one signal line, but a second one as well that's flipped 180 degrees out of phase or it's flipped polarity more accurately. And this helps to cancel out any noise that's generated between the source and the destination. And that's why you'll often see an unbalanced and a balanced output on a lot of amp modeling units, effects units, that sort of thing. There's plenty of use cases where one of these connections is gonna make a lot more sense than the other. And there's another set of plenty use cases where either one of them are gonna be completely fine. You know, if you're interfacing with an amplifier and like four cable method, unbalanced is gonna be fine because, you know, an amp doesn't have a balanced input, but if you're interfacing with an audio interface or a PA or a mixer, then try to stick with balance just for the benefits it provides. Um, some people claim that, you know, they hear a bigger sound stage and uh, it's just more full overall and perhaps in some very, you know, analytical tests, that is true. I find for guitar applications though, the differences are gonna be so minute most of the time that it's, it's not really worth worrying about if you're playing a gig and all they have is, you know, a standard TS cable for um, your unbalanced or versus balanced output. So, you know, if you're recording in the studio, definitely try to stick with balance, but um, there, are, there are some times that you can definitely get by with either one. Now I mentioned TRS earlier, while bringing up a different cable because this is another instance where 
same cable, different connector, whereas we ran into same connector, different cable earlier. For example, I'm actually running the studio monitors behind me off of a TRS to XLR cable because I don't have an XLR output on my interface, but it's still balanced. You know, stuff like the original Line 6 Pod has balanced outputs. They're not stereo, but they're balanced. Um, the headphone is unbalanced stereo. So it's kind of funny how those things work. And what I hope that you're kind of understanding here is that it matters less and less about the connection. You can always kind of get splitters or um, you know, different interfaces or cables that simply have one connector on one end and a different one on the other. It's kind of what's going on in here. These are you know, glorified, standardized hunks of metal that conduct the signal. That's, that's really all they do. Here's the thing that gets really crazy though. I mentioned earlier that a TRRS cable can be used for switching or even expression pedals. And while it's not strictly audio, it still lies within the realm of analog circuits. So you, know, you can kind of wrap your head around it. But many of you may not know that a standard XLR cable, you know, this all analog copper wire thing, can be used as an interface for digital audio. The AES-3 standard, which isn't terribly common on consumer hardware, you might run into it on amp modelers and some interfaces every now and then, um, but you can play back 44.1 or 48 kilohertz stereo audio over this one cable and connect different gear to use that. Um, the more consumer friendly version of that is SBDIF, the Sony Philips interface. And that's exactly what I use to connect my AX8 to my um, interface. I use it on some consoles and my TV and stuff. And it's a really good interface if you don't want to go through any unnecessary digital to audio conversions, because that is the bad thing about, you know, something like an amp modeler. If you want to run it straight to a board, it's fine. If you want to record with it though, and you're not using any other standard, then this keeps the digital to audio conversions down to one. While I'm a big fan for SBDIF in my personal workflow, one of the more common digital standards nowadays for amp modeling hardware and, and digital stuff in general is USB audio. It is after all, the connection that most PCs run on when it comes to uh, audio interfaces. Unless you're running Mac, then it'll be something like Thunderbolt uh, or Lightning connections. But for stuff like amp modelers or all-in-one interfaces, you can expect to have anywhere between two to eight lanes, both in and out. So, you know, on the high end, if you're running something like an AxeFX or a Helix or something like that, then you could potentially record a DI track, a process stereo track, um, depending on your other I.O. situation, maybe even other instruments at the same time. And then you can do the same thing going out, you know, split it to different sources and destinations, and that sort of thing. So um, that can be an extremely powerful tool. And depending on your needs, you know, you can match different sampling rates and use one piece of gear as your master, the other as a slave if you're running SBDIF and things can definitely get complicated. But this is another instance where we have a few connections that we're all rather familiar with, whether it be the XLR cable or your bog standard USB cable, and it can do anything from charge your smartphone to, you know, deliver a clean audio stream. So in conclusion, then don't judge a uh, cable by its cover, quite literally in this case, uh, definitely read on the cable to see if it's what you need. And do your research on the product that you're using. Just because a piece of gear uses I.O. you're familiar with doesn't necessarily mean it's doing that same sort of job or that the cable you already own is gonna be able to fulfill that job. So especially if you have something that's unlabeled, which isn't super common, unless it's like handmade, then do some research, make sure you're using the right tool for the job. A lot of things you can definitely assume and be okay with, you know, guitar effects pedals, instrument cables, patch cables, all that's going to work. Um, if it says connecting a head to a speaker cabinet, it's going to be a speaker cable, you know, a microphone, XLR, stuff like that, as long as it's not a super weird standard that's, you know, ancient at this point. But um, most of the stuff nowadays is rather standardized, but you can run into some fringe scenarios. So just always keep an eye out for it. And understand if you need an instrument cable, it'd be balanced, unbalanced, stereo, whatever. The uh, combinations are damn near endless, especially by the time you get into splitters and conversions and all that sort of stuff. So hopefully that helped you out on your audio journey. Any other questions and comments, as always, please leave them down below. And thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.